Okay, so how many of you are listening to what I just said to them? Oh, good, everybody didn't tune out, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Jesus says this morning something that's, this is a, this is a difficult thing for us to understand. Um, it's, it's both promise and command. It's both good news and bad news. It's both one and another, right? Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how is it to begin, become salt again? Right? Can salt actually not become salt? Can it? Is it possible for salt not to be salt? Is it possible for sodium chloride, NaCl, right? That's the basic chemical formula for salt. Okay, is it possible for salt not to be salt? I, I hear I hear different people around here. Yes, it is actually possible for it to lose its and become a different type of salt. I don't remember what it's called now, but it's it's salt that doesn't taste like salt. It's lost its flavor. And once salt has lost its flavor, what is it good for? Not uh, very little. <laughs> I didn't find anything that it was actually good for. And then then Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. But if you light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket, what happens? Well, it depends on, first of all, how close the bushel basket is to the candle. The bushel basket will catch on fire and it'll be an even bigger light, right? (laughs) Which I don't understand that one. I was like, wouldn't that just make a bigger light? I mean... And plus, most bushel baskets I know are not airtight. They have holes. So the light wouldn't... Of course, I'm just blowing Jesus' parable right out of the water here, right? But the point is, you don't light a candle and then blow it out. You light a candle for a purpose. But if I light this candle and blow it out, I could relight it. And make it be a candle again. So what does Jesus mean by this? You are the salt of the earth, the earth, everything in creation. And you are the light to the world. Again, everything in creation. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law, but to uphold the law. Not one jot or tittle of any letter will be taken away until all has been fulfilled. What does that mean? One jot or tittle. It doesn't actually say that in your readings, but that's the way it should read, because that's the that's the good old King James version. What does that mean? On what language? What language was the law originally written in? Hebrew. The law and the prophets was originally written in Hebrew, and those little squiggly lines, if you've ever seen Hebrew written, jots are the dots. And the little squiggly line things are called tittles. Not one jot or tittle will be removed until all has been fulfilled. Jesus says nothing from what is written in the law and the prophets will be changed. Everything still stands. Jesus did not come to get rid of what the Old Testament says, but to fulfill what the Old Testament says. And he goes on. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do will be called least in the kingdom of God. For unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of God. How is this promise to you? Sounds pretty foreboding, actually. Because Jesus just said that unless your righteousness or your... What did I say righteousness also meant last week? For those of you that were here and paying attention. (laughs) Righteousness is also dikaios, which is... I'll give points to a confirmation student that can tell me. 
justice. If your justice does not exceed that of the Pharisees or the scribes, you will never see the kingdom of heaven. You see, this is the promise in this is you are salt and you are light. Jesus doesn't say, I hope someday you might be. Or you really should try to be. Or you can be. Jesus says, you are salt for the earth. And you are light for the world. My question to you is, what does your flavor bring? And what is your light exposing? Because you are doing something out in the world. You are bringing flavor to what is happening around you. You are exposing things that are out in the darkness. But what are those things? Because we have the choice in following after Jesus. That's why Jesus continues this on with, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And unless your justice or righteousness does not exceed that of the Pharisees, you'll never see the kingdom of heaven. Because you see, we have to understand what Jesus means by the law and the prophets. Because he talks about this later. Actually, the law and the prophets refer to two sections of the Old Testament. The law was the Torah, or the first five books of the Bible. And the prophets was the writing of the prophets that talked about... What Israel was doing and how the prophets were bringing God's message to the people. Right? The law and the prophets. And Jesus talks later on in Matthew about how the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In Matthew 22 verse 40, Jesus says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And what are those two commandments? The greatest two commandments ever given. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second is like the first, to love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang upon this. See, it's not about keeping the letter of the law, but fulfilling the law. Do you see the difference? Is there a difference between keeping the black and white letter of the law and fulfilling the law? This, this means yes, this means no, this means, I assume you're going to tell me in a second anyhow. Think of a story for a moment. A mom and a dad go out on a date and they leave their children at home alone. They're old enough to stay home alone. They're not like, you know, two and three years old. They're, let's say, 15 and 14 and 11. And the parents go out and they tell the kids before they go out, they say, don't answer the phone, don't go outside, don't let anyone you don't know into the house, right? Those are the commandments. While the parents are out, the house catches on fire. Now for the kids to obey the black and white letter of the commandments, they cannot go out of the house And they cannot let strangers come into their house. And who are these strangers that they need to let come into their house that are going to come in a really big red truck? (laughs) Right? They're fulfilling what their parents' desires are. But they are not keeping the black and white letter of the commandment. Because we have to remember where this reading comes from. It comes in the second section here of what we have now as the Sermon on the Mount, which started last week with Jesus saying, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. And blessed are those who are meek. And blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness. And blessed are those, right? Those who are held in a position because of where they were at and they can't get out of it. And Jesus is telling you that you are salt and you are light and you are going to flavor your world around you and you're going to bring light to something that's out there. And if your justice doesn't surpass that of the scribes and the Pharisees, then you're not going to see heaven. And you think maybe he's referring back to this section he did that we talked about last week because it's like right after that. If you look in your Bible, you read it. It's all one section. 
Jesus said, blessed are you, blessed are you. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light to the world. And unless you do for those who can't do for themselves, then you're not going to see the kingdom of heaven. It's exactly what the prophet said in the Old Testament, right? Isaiah said, what is the fast that I seek? Is that the fast that I seek, that you draw attention to yourself, that you're more concerned about yourself than you are others? No, that is not the fast that I seek. Is not the fast that I choose, God says, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke? Is it not that you share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, and when you see someone naked, you cover them, and you don't hide yourself from things that need to be done? You are... Or, y'all are salt, and you are light, and you are going to bring flavor and expose the darkness. And exposing that darkness is going to do things that we don't want to do, because that's what Jesus calls us to do. And we see it all over the place. John didn't want to baptize Jesus because it wasn't the right way for it to be done. But Jesus said to him, we have to do it this way so that all Righteousness may be fulfilled. Things we have to do that we don't understand because God is calling us to do them. Because He said that you are His hands and His feet. You are His salt and His light. And you are the ones that need to go into the world and make sure everyone knows that. Not just us. You are salt to the earth and light to the world. Not just the confines of this building, but everywhere. So go. Knowing that Jesus has blessed you and gifted you to do the job that he's calling you to do. And will walk with you every day and in every way give you the words to say. Because as Corinthians tells us, even the spirit searches the depths of God and knows what's going to happen. And as we're going to hear here in just a few seconds, or we're going to sing, actually, hopefully some of you will know this song and you're going to sing along, right? The refrain is, so carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the helpless, confused and torn, hold out your candle for all to see and take your candle and go light the world. Because God has called us to go out into the world, to seek out those who are being held in bonds that they can't possibly break, to give them the things that God has given to us and through us, so that all may come to know how much God loves each and every one of us.